And attention all anchors for ad-free listening, bonus episodes, exclusive merchandise and the chance to join a future recording of the podcast. You can now sign up for the FFS Club. Just head to our website, f1forsuccess.com. Hello and welcome to Formula for Success. Eddie Jordan here. Arr! And I'm doing that because I feel a little bit naked because I'm without DC doing this. He's away with family in Scotland on a well-deserved little break. So we'll have him back. Actually, we'll have him back on the show just immediately after this because DC and I, we did a wonderful, wonderful podcast live at Silverstone as support for Kings of Leon, and that was pretty cool in itself because it was freezing, it was Baltic, apart from cool in every way. So um, enough about that. We're going to get on and talk about Silverstone and we're going to talk about the winners and the losers. When we talk about winners, of course, there was one major winner and that was Lewis Hamilton. Um, you know, the atmosphere was euphoric, triumphant. It was amazing. Silverstone went absolutely stratospheric. And I, I put that down to what Lewis has done over the last 16, 18 years. He's brought such joy and happiness to people of motor racing interests, uh, to the life, I would say, is kind of inspirational. And the reason I say that is because I'm looking at people like Lando, uh, who was in the race against him, and George Russell, and and of course, now new recruit and congratulations, Oliver Berman. We'll see him next year. Um, and that's a very happy day for him and, in fact, the Haas team and for all of us, in fact. But um, I believe that Lewis has done more than anybody else in recent years to bring those drivers on, to give them the, the belief that they can succeed, that they can win races, of course. And uh, I think it's it's right that he did it and what he did in front of the people in the grandstands. It was actually very emotional. And I think he welled up. And as a result, everyone else welled up when they heard him on the, on, on, in the car coming back in. And well done to... Mercedes did a great job, really. And they are also part of the winners um, because, you know, stacking like they did... Lewis pa passing George and then the two of them coming into the pits one after the other, losing little or no time. I thought that was epic racing. And it's only when you see how it's so easy it was done, you can't believe how difficult it is. And it's fraught with problems because just getting the tyres wrong and putting the wrong tyres in the wrong place at the right time, whatever, both cars could have been excluded. And, and I'd say that probably caused a little bit of a problem for McLaren. They decided not to do that uh, and take more of a risk with Oscar. But let's go back to George because that was a bittersweet situation. Having won in Austria... Uh, a, year, a week ago, and then suddenly to come to Silverstone uh, on, on Saturday. My God, what a qualifying lap that was. Just absolutely awesome. Um, you know, we saw all sorts of things happening in the race. We, we, we saw Max uh, beat Lando off the line, and we saw then Lewis pass George. And uh, it just unfolded into one of the greatest races that I've seen in recent times. And... Um, uh, so people who actually came out winners in that, obviously, uh, I think Sainz was right there. Uh, McLaren were right there. Uh, obviously, Nico Hulkenberg, we mustn't forget about that. So to bring, to bring the Haas into that position uh, in the finishing order, and when you think about what this guy has done, he's been with Force India, he went off and he won uh, Le Mans, he missed a couple of seasons in Formula One, and now he's back as the main guy uh, in the Audi program. So we wish him every success, and, and in fact we miss him next year because I think uh, he brings a great presence to the situation. Uh, Aston Martin, two cars in the top ten, I think that was a move forward because they haven't been going well up to that. So let's hope this is a kickstart for them. Um, also, you know, the, the situation in terms of the losers, um, Checo is such a massive disappointment. I just don't know what's going on there. Uh, and indeed, Charles Leclerc, having won and being the darling of everybody uh, in Monaco, 
uh, royalty, everyone was bowing to his greatness, and that was a great race to win. But nevertheless, you've got to capitalize on those race wins and make sure that you build on it. Otherwise, the foundation is gone. And I'm struggling to find out why or where is that speed gone that he showed so so clearly in Monaco and in other races in the past. So we need to watch that. And... Um, you know, other things that happened, of course, uh, during the, the highlights of the thing. I have to say, in hindsight, we have a potential world champion this year in Max Verstappen. And truthfully, if we analyse carefully, his car was not good enough in qualifying, qualifying fourth. We know he had the problem with the, the floor. They did their best to fix it. Uh, and it was always going to be a battle in the race. But, you know, what's unbelievable about Max Verstappen. When you roll back the last 15, 20 laps of every race, he comes to, f to the fore and he is a tough, tough nut to crack. And um, do I think that he could have passed Lewis? Truthfully, I don't think so. I think Lewis had that in hand. You know, the crowd, the euphoria, everything about the British Grand Prix that Lewis stands for, I don't think uh, Max would have been able to pass him. But, you know, who knows? That's all in the future. And it's a similar situation. Would Lando have been able to, to pass, obviously, Max at Imola? So it's all up in the sky. The facts are that it was a brilliant, brilliant race and everybody was so impressed uh, with Silverstone itself, how it was run. For those of you who weren't there, it was Baltic. I cannot tell you how cold it was. But then you kind of get used to that with Silverstone. And uh, having lived there and lived on on the circuit for 15 years or thereabouts, maybe more, um, I kind of got used to it. And then I got unused to it and I thought it was really cold. But it didn't stop the excitement of the crowd and everyone was ripping on for a British win. And the fact that it could have been a 1-2-3 for Britain was a kind of heady days. But to have two in the top three was, oh, I think that was a big day for the British motor racing fans uh, and something to enjoy for the season to come and in seasons, uh, further seasons to come in, in many respects. Um, I, I do want to say a little thing about Oscar Piastri because yet again he suffered badly. Uh, we know in Austria about the track limits and he suffered... Uh, different situations uh, every time. So the experience he's getting, and this time he had to do a lap basically in, in undrivable situations uh, in slick tyres. Um, and that is the most uncomfortable thing because you need to keep the car on the track. And that's just a little note to all of the drivers. There was no actual safety car. And I was staggered, I must tell you, that that's a great compliment to each and every one of those drivers there because of all of the times and the situations you would expect a safety car, it should have been at Silverstone, but there wasn't. And uh, momentarily, let me get back to Oscar because I think with everything that he's learning and all of the downside and the things that are really hurting him at the moment, um, I, have, I must tell you that I think he's learning a huge amount from it. He's learning from McLaren, of course, and he's learning from, from Lando. And he will be, and this is just me looking into my crystal ball in the future, I am absolutely certain he will be a world champion within a very short number of years. He has everything that I think a world champion should have, and he is now gaining so much experience in that team and the confidence. Uh, I've no doubt that he's going to be one of the all-time future kings of our sport.